This is a 3090 Ti and now seems like it's a little bit redundant because we have two RTX 4090s. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Yeah. You looking for performance? Well, have I got the goods for you. This bad boy has everything you need and it comes in up to two terabytes. So uh, size isn't a, uh, a problem. <laughs> also forget about SATA or those super slow hard drives as it's PCIe Gen 4 for blazing fast speeds. And this baby is M.2, so you can attach it directly to your motherboard. No hassle, no extra wires. This is the best around. You interested? Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, so let's say I was a little bit overzealous or whatever with the beginning, you know. 3090 Ti isn't exactly redundant, but I've got this here because I want to compare it against the two 4090s that we've got. So we've got one from Gigabyte, the gaming OC, and we've got one from MSI. I'll be honest from the get-go, we're not going to be able to talk about performance. We have tested these already, so even though I'm going to be unboxing them and showing you kind of what you get, what the cards look like, how they compare to a mammoth card like the gaming OC RTX 3090 Ti, I can't tell you anything about any figures that we've actually done. But I can tell you about some of the specs, some of the changes and things like that. So, let's start with the Gigabyte one. This is the gaming OC. Now, the 4090s in general don't use the Ampere architecture anymore like we saw with the 30 series. Instead, we have Ada Lovelace. And a lot of people, including myself, kind of said that Ada Lovelace was what maybe Ampere should have been. Maybe Ampere was more like a kind of used as a testing ground in preparation for Ada Lovelace. And this is kind of, you know, the, the finished product. So we have the card itself, um, but the main thing, let's talk about sort of what else we get. We do get some brackets. Now, I can tell you straight away, there is a very, very good reason why these brackets are included as standard. We are starting to see graphics cards, I guess, get a little bit bigger in size. And uh, yeah, this is kind of, you know, to go with it. We do have all the screws, fixtures and fittings. And then we have an adapter cable. Now, I get it. Lots of people were upset when the adapter cables came out on the 3090 and 3090 Ti. Things have changed a little bit now because now we do have, I guess, more power going to these cards. And there is a lot of, let's call it, misinformation going around at the moment. So that's why we actually made a video with Johnny Guru from Corsair, uh, the original OG when it comes to power supplies. And he kind of dispelled a lot of these myths and went through why these adapter cables aren't going to blow your power power supply up. They are okay and things like that. The main thing you're going to see that's different is we now have four eight pin connectors that go into the single kind of 12 pin plus the four sense pins. You can obviously use um, your own adapter cable if you have one, which will come with the GPU or you can buy these separately. You can get extensions. I'm sure that's all kind of coming as well as well as just using a direct cable. But this is a card. So this is a 4090. It has this new little connector on there and it is an absolute monumental beast. Again, if I get the 3090 Ti out, I mean, there's not really much in it in terms of the length. There's, I guess, a slight little bit more with the 4090. In terms of if I put them this way, you can see it, there's not really much in it. Thickness wise, I'd say maybe, yes, it's a little bit thicker but that's kind of where the similarities kind of end. You know, I mean, weight wise, I'd actually say the 3090 Ti maybe even weighs a little bit more. Now, obviously not everyone's got a gaming OC 3090 Ti to hand, so it's gonna be hard for you to kind of comprehend and see the difference. But one key difference that you will actually see is the fact that the fans on this are a lot, lot larger, which kind of, you know, leads you to speculation that this is gonna potentially run hotter. Um, it needs, you know, this extra kind of cooling performance and things like that. So, I don't know, take from that, I guess, what you will. In terms of connectors on this particular card, because obviously it may differ from AIB to AIB, or if you're getting a Founders Edition or something like that, but straight away we can see that we have DisplayPort, 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 and HDMI. You will notice again with the, uh, with the connector, this is kind of the original one, so it does differ ever so slightly. It's, if anything, a little bit longer in comparison, but it does have them extra four sense pins on there as well. So next up, MSI. This is the Supreme X. Now, one thing you will notice on the box especially, and it was the same on the Gigabyte, the font for the 4090 has changed. So all the rumors and speculations about font changes that we saw actually came to light when Jensen uh, announced the card and everything. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it looks a bit, 
almost like they should have used Comic Sans, if that makes sense. But straight away from this box, you can see that the Supreme has completely changed. They have actually changed the mouse mat. It used to be kind of more gaming orientated with like black and red, if I remember rightly, whereas now is, I don't know, it looks a bit more professional, a little bit more premium, which I, I guess is, that's where MSI may be trying to position the Supreme X in terms of, I don't know, that premium high-end kind of positioning. Again, we do get a bracket. And I use a Supreme X card myself, actually, and this straight away is a lot, lot better quality. Again, it just, it looks a lot more premium. And then again, we do get our four eight pins into, uh, into the uh, 12 or 16 with the four cents wires adapter. Now, this card, this, this weighs a ton. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, this weighs an absolute ton. Compared to the Gigabyte card, there isn't really much in it in terms of the length. If I put them side by side, just so you can get an idea, because I'm pretty sure all cards are going to be about this size when you're looking at 4090. You can actually see the Gigabyte card, if anything, is ever so slightly taller. Thickness wise, I'd say the Gigabyte kind of has it one there as well. In terms of the heat sinks though, they are, yeah, they're both extremely vast. I'd probably say the MSI actually has slightly bigger um, kind of, you know, surface area of, of actual heat sinks. Heat pipe wise, you can't really see too much what's going on. There's kind of two coming out this side, but then in the middle, it looks like it could actually terminate into six, maybe even eight heat pipes. Other than that, it has a back plate, which has changed ever so slightly. Instead of getting the MSI kind of dragon on there, it's now got the new Supreme X logo. And that's about really all there is to say on the aesthetics. It is a beautiful looking card, as is the Gigabyte. In terms of our display connectors, we have three display ports again, and a single HDMI. So performance wise, like I say, we can't go through anything. We can't show you anything, but there are obviously very bold claims out there specifically directly from Nvidia. Straight away though, we know with the 4090 compared to the 3090 Ti, there is, if I remember rightly, a 52 to 53% uplift in CUDA cores, RT cores, and Tensor cores. So our CUDA cores for obviously pure rasterization, our RT cores for ray tracing, and then our Tensor cores for DLSS, including um, sort of newer versions of DLSS as well, which is gonna be coming to many, many titles. So there's some exciting stuff coming. And obviously when you think about the comparison of 52 to 53% uplift in all of the cores across rasterization, ray tracing, and DLSS, you'd like to think there's going to be some pretty huge performance gains. And Nvidia have made that clear on some of the kind of data that they've already been putting out there that there is quite a substantial uplift in performance when it comes to pure rasterization as well as in ray tracing focused titles as well. So that is pretty much all I've really got to say today. Obviously we will have performance figures on both of these cards, how they compare against each other, as well as how they compare against the 3090 Ti, 3090, 3080 Ti, 6950 XT, 6900 XT, everything on that high end. We're probably going to focus more on the 4K, but we will have data on kind of, you know, all main major resolutions, 1080p, 1440p and 4K, as well as lots of data on ray tracing and DLSS as well. If you want to support us for everything that we do, especially when it comes to all this testing and everything, then uh, feel free to sign up to our Patreon. The link for that is down below. And let me know in the comments section, which card are you specifically looking at? Are we talking Gigabyte Gaming OC? Generally holds that kind of sweet spot of you know, value for money and the performance that you get, not just in performance of the GPU, but of the cooler as well, or the MSI Supreme X, something admittedly is gonna be more expensive, but more maybe on the premium side, maybe offering slightly better performance as well through the core clock speeds and things like that. Really interesting to know kind of, you know, where people's heads are, or you're just gonna completely skip the 4090, go for something less, or just skip the 40 series in general and wait for maybe 30 series to carry on going down. Yeah, let me know in the comments section below. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.